My name is Raymond Goyce. I teach in the Faculty of Philosophy here at Cambridge. Plato's Socrates repeatedly describes his life as one devoted to the pursuit of self-knowledge. And this impulse on the part of humans to know who they are, both individually and collectively, is the central legitimating principle of the humanities. Socrates, to be sure, seems to have thought that the pursuit of self-knowledge was attainable through a formalized discussion that essentially involved calling into question traditional beliefs, received beliefs, and the attempt to give an account of these beliefs. This, the idea, however, that self-knowledge requires the calling into question of received beliefs has always been politically problematic. The Athenians put Socrates to death because he wouldn't stop asking questions. The majority of the Athenian judges thought they already knew, thank you very much, who they were, and moreover, they knew who other Athenians ought to know themselves to be. And they realized that the asking of questions is not a neutral activity, but that it can in itself have at least a mildly subversive effect. Only societies that are very powerful and very sure of themselves can afford the luxury of this kind of free questioning. But for a long time, many Western societies have paid at least lip service to the idea of a form of self-knowledge that was based on questioning. Who gets to ask which questions, in which contexts, and who gets to decide which forms of knowledge will be cultivated and where cognitive attention will be directed are, of course, in themselves also obviously political questions. The project of self-knowledge includes the natural sciences, but we also very rightly think that part of what we want to know when we know who we are is what our position is in a specifically human world. And that is to know, uh, to know history, sociology, foreign languages, and also something about our own and other people's forms of imagination. Forms of imagination which are especially accessible through their works of art. It's no denigration of the biochemist that he's not in a position to help us to understand diplomatic texts written in a foreign language. Why do we want such self-knowledge? Socrates thought that a life of self-knowledge was an inherently good one. The unexamined life, he famously said, is not a life of poverty, weakness, lack of material resources, or failure, but it is a life that is in itself not worth living. Even if this is true, and even if the humanities are an important part of such a life, Thinking about the matter in this way might seem to give the whole endeavor an inappropriately individualist twist. <laughs> if the point of the humanities is the individual's cultivation of his or her self-knowledge, why should society as a whole be asked to pay through taxation for that? So there's an understandable temptation to try to find a further instrumental value which the humanities might serve in society. And of course, one can find such an instrumental value. There are few more important social values than that of enlightened public discussion. Our politicians frequently use relatively abstract concepts such as freedom, human rights, the international community, modernization, the rule of law, in trying to justify particular political courses of action. Many of these concepts are internally complex. Many are ambiguous, having a large number of different meanings. And the use of many of these concepts is historically integrated into forms of uh, argument in which theoretical, descriptive, interpretative, and evaluative claims are connected. These terms are used to justify courses of action that have very significant, often lethal, consequences for many, many people. Is the Islamic democracy 
of the Islamic Republic of Iran, sufficiently unlike anything we could recognize as a democracy to make it imperative that we support the call by former Prime Minister Tony Blair for aggressive, potentially military confrontation with Iran? Should we try to, to decide this without asking ourselves what democracy means and what it has meant and what its historically varying forms have been? If we do not have a publicly funded and institutionally distinct realm for what I'll call humanistic discussion, we can easily end up in a situation in which the need to know of Rupert Murdoch and the US Department of Defense and also their need to impose ignorance and cognitive and moral conformity on others will be even more seriously in danger of skewing our discussion than it does now. This, I submit, will have disadvantages for us that are too numerous to mention. However, in addition, many of us will not at all like the kinds of people whom we and our successors will have become under those circumstances. Thank you.